Hello, my name is Richard Kent. Uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, Charles Darwin and his famous finches, which he found in the Galapagos Islands somewhere around the 1830s. He took his, book, his uh, ship, the Beagle, uh, to the Galapagos Islands, uh, which is about 600 miles off the west coast of South America. And there he thought he found something absolutely stunning, which he wrote about in his book published in 1859, The Origin of Species. Now, he did actually describe various different things, but what is normally attributed to Charles Darwin is his famous work on finches. And he, used, he later used his work on finches and, and, in fairness, other things as well, to say, to, to, to talk about his theory of evolution. Now, I want to describe to you exactly what Charles Darwin did actually find. He actually found, when he got to the Galapagos Islands, he found 13 different varieties of finches, and here they are. You can see these uh, picture of these 13 different varieties of finches. Uh, quite uh, small, plump birds, uh, but actually they, they got a, a variation in length and breadth of beak, according to what they actually eat. If they're looking for little bugs, um, insects underneath the barks, then obviously long beaks are more suitable. If they're crunching up nuts, then a small, a shorter, a stronger beaks are more suitable. So what he decided is that there was, um, in his mind, there was a sort of primitive uh, finch and that all of these other designs of birds, bird um, beaks, in other words, the breadth and the length of the beaks, uh, came as a result of evolution. Now, um, I don't think he would get away with that nowadays uh, because actually he did not see evolution. True evolution is um, one species or kind of animals, as described in the book of Genesis, changing into another kind of animal. For example, a cat changing into a dog or a dog changing into a camel. What he saw was, a, was different types of uh, finches with different lengths and breadths of beak. So I want to talk now about gene pools. Now within a population, let's take dogs for example, there are gene pools um, for short dogs, tall dogs, uh, dogs with long hair, dogs with short hair, uh, dogs with uh, loud barks and dogs with little, uh, little barks. I'm just using uh, dogs as an example, because there is a gene pool within the dog population for all of these different appearances of dogs. Um, however, you can't cross a dog with a cat. Uh, it just doesn't, doesn't work. Um, uh, for example, if you, tr if you try to cross a horse with a donkey, uh, you will get an animal called, uh, I believe it's an ass, but it's actually sterile. Um, so God has protected the species so that they can't interbreed across different species. Um, so the same applies to humans. Humans have different coloured hair, different coloured um, eyes, different coloured skin, all sorts of things which you're very aware of because within humans there's a gene pool. Now the point I'm coming to is that Charles Darwin did not see evolution. That is the change of one type of animal into another type of animal. What he saw is microevolution or variation of a kind within one species. And in fact, nobody has ever seen evolution. Um, people may challenge me on that, but uh, in fact, Charles Darwin said that evolution happens very slowly. Well, if that's the case, lots and lots of dogs, in fact, most dogs should be actually in the process of changing into cats. That is not the case. In fact, uh, when God created the heavens and the earth and created all the animals and the birds and the fish, he created kinds and he created uh, the, the humans in the exact likeness of himself. So don't be deceived by Darwin and his finches. It's, it, it's uh, false science. Just read the truth, which is in Genesis chapter 1. Thanks for listening and God bless you.